two heads really are better than one. Hey, it's me, Cisco Morrison. Here's what's coming up on Garden with Cisco. Hey, buddy. It may not be edible, know, but it's, it's cool. Hard. We're planting Sedum Pizza. Find out what this Washington town has that makes this fertilizer special. Bake a tropical treat. Watch out, it may make you hula. Add scented blossoms to a winter garden and discover a Skagit Valley Seed Company. All this is coming up right now on Gardening with Cisco. I'm Cisco Morris. And I'm Ega Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. You know, don't you always want to know what's behind the scenes at a seed catalog That'd place? That's so cool, absolutely. Well, we're going to show you what really goes on. We're at Osborne Seeds over in Mount Vernon. Cool. Yeah, and look at their catalog. Love it. We're going to go in and show you everything that goes on in a big seed company and the new varieties for 2012. But right now, we're going to make pizza. Pizza? Hey, wait a minute, we're not ready for cooking now. It's sedum, you goofball. Oh. Sedum pizza. So I love little sedums. There are, look at all of these are sedums, little succulents. Yeah, a and few him and chicks in well, there. Okay, they're hiding in there. Look at him. Um, but they're so fun and there's so much variety with them. And so you yeah. are making a sedum pizza. Yeah, you know, because people have like old broken bird baths that leak, you know. I have one. Do you have yeah. one? Mine, I didn't have one, but I wanted to show how to do it. So I took this old saucer I never right. use anymore, drilled a couple holes in it. Okay. And we're going to, now this is a whole new experiment. We've never tried this before. I'm not sure how good it's going to work, but it'll be fun. So we have our crust, yep. so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> You're going right. to put a little bit of soil yep. in. Okay. That's a little heebie, but I, did, I grabbed everything they had in the succulent section. How about if we put three of these right around this Ten guy? It'll be okay. like a... Uh, I don't know, it looks like a jungle scene to me. Like this guy? Well, that, Look at yeah, how cute they good. are. I think okay. I have another one right of those. Two more of those. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah. so you had, sorry, I can't see. That's all right. There's, I know, it's kind of hard. It's a to, jungle in here. It's kind of like picking through the veggies for the pizza, you know? Oh, yeah, look at it. Ooh, la, la. Ooh that looks good already. This is kind of craziness. Now, Isn't they're, they're going to grow in just such little amounts oh, yeah. of soil. Oh, yeah, you know what I want them to do? Just cram in there. Yeah. You know, th this is like vegetarian pizza, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, it is. <laughs> the more you cram on, the better it is. So then do we want trailers to kind of go? Yeah, and I got some top. cool trailers. Blaze of Fulda. Ooh. Creeping stone crop. See, that's going to look cool in there, won't it? A little hard to untangle. Oh, there, yeah, exactly. You kind of got a mess out of these babies. <laughs> there, come on. There you go. Hey, there we go. Okay, so let's get some trailers going. Well, you really need to start tearing off yeah, some of the... Yeah, especially for these trailers. And I'm going to have quite as much room for those. I'll take another trailer I in there, Megan. I can find one. There uh, we go. Thanks. Oh, beauty. Okay, and then yeah, you and, got one and, more. And see, now, Megan, I'll bet you're thinking, well, he's putting in these trailers, so we can't be putting this on the ground. You know? I, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> How does he know these things? <laughs> you read my mind after all these years. <laughs> and these really don't need that much soil, do they? No, they need hardly any soil and very little water. So, okay, I think if we just fill in now, Megan, okay. now, this will be the challenge. we got to just try and kind of But I like this one, so I'm going to plant here. Yeah any way we can so now when you do this doing? be expect you are, to make a mess <laughs> i say you are making you're telling ah, them right ah, on the plants you goofball oh, la, la. when we water it all even out this will kind of wash off <laughs> oh ice chunks in your water. of ice holy cat so megan look i found this old metal pot i had sitting yeah. around what do you think oh look at that and then the trailers will trail over yeah so 
It's our first attempt at a sedum pizza. I think it turned out pretty cool. I think it did too. I like that. So just go to the store and pick up. I mean, you've got so many different ones to choose oh, from. Oh, yeah. And just, you know, if you got an old bird bath, something like that doesn't work. Boy, it's made to order for something like this. So sedums aren't just for putting in pizzas or growing on the <laughs> ground. They're used in green roofs now all oh, the time. Cool. There's a Ford plant back at Dearborn, Michigan with 10 acres of green roof sedum everywhere. I like them because it's really hard to kill them. <laughs> Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the Osborne Seed Company here in Mount Vernon. We're in the warehouse right now. Seed everywhere. And you know, they've been selling to commercial growers, small farms since 1982. Wow. You go to a market, you know, and buy some vegetables, probably came from Osborne Seed. Well, another made in Washington product is an organic fertilizer by Hendricus. Now, before it ever makes it into your backyard, it gets its start in a small eastern Washington town. Tenasket, Washington has stunning scenery, a Norman Rockwell Main Street, and the picturesque Okanagan River running through it. This north central Washington town also has something special in the hills that surround it. Lots of limestone. That's why Hendricus Organics makes its fertilizers here. Local limestone is a key ingredient. Hey Steve! You made it! Well, great to see you! <laughs> see Great to see you. Glad you could make it up here. Pacific Calcium makes organic fertilizers, and this small family-run operation is, well, like family to Tina Peterson of Hendricus Organics. It's kind of an old-school business relationship, the kind that you really, really cherish, and they've become close friends over the years. Right? So it's a joy for me to be up here and, and spend some more time with these guys. And they're excellent people to work with. We uh, love their product. If we didn't, we wouldn't make it. The reason that we chose this plant for our fertilizers is not just because it's a local company. We want to support local business. It's a Washington company. But it's also the integrity, the consciousness, the care that they put into the products here. I trust that our products coming out of here are the best they possibly can be. Hendricus fertilizer is made in four ton batches. That's actually a small amount, and it requires a lot of customization. Is that my product? Yes, it is. All right, awesome. Mixing, then adding binders, then drying it in this massive machine requires just the right combination of time, heat, and attention. And this is? Alejandro. Alejandro, hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right, great. You'd think a fertilizer plant would be, well, stinky. But all the organic ingredients mean the ick factor doesn't exist here. It smells great. Oh, I love it seeing in this state. This plant only allows natural organic ingredients to run through the machinery. There's nothing else that goes into this plant besides organic fertilizers. There's no feed, so there's no GMO going through there. There's no, there's no blood meal. Everything is clean. I know that our products are not contaminated. They're pure, rich, organic fertilizers. And that gives me a lot of confidence when I put that on the market and tell people you can trust what we give you. After drying, the fertilizer's bag 20 pounds at a time. Ooh, it's nice and warm too. Awesome. Oh, it smells, smells good enough to eat. Looks terrific. Great size. Awesome. Makes me hungry. It's all, it smells so good it's almost like eating it, you know? It's like, wow, it's kind of like coffee and vanilla and all these good fragrances. <laughs> and it's warm, like right out of the oven. Despite the machinery, this is a hands-on process until the very end. It's a hand warmer because everything is so nice and warm when it comes off the belt. You can feel the product. It's like, it might be, it might be only 30 degrees out here, but if your hands are cold, you just bury them in the middle of the pallet. And when a pallet of fertilizer is ready to make the journey from Tanaska to your garden, it contains far more than the sum of its parts. In this process, every single person who touches our fertilizer, frankly, really cares about it. Now, all that energy comes into our fertilizer. There's a magic in our fertilizer. They, they even amaze me constantly with the feedback I get from people on how they work. And I see it in my own gardens and I just go, wow. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from the packing room of the Osborne Seed Company. 
where I just found some great red ball Brussels uh, sprouts. Uh, you yuck. know, they trial all the seeds they sell to make sure they're suitable for growing in the Pacific Northwest. I'm just glad I don't have to test the Brussels sprouts to be suitable for eating. <laughs> Speaking of eating, I understand you and Lynn were whipping up a little tropical fruit dish? Oh, it was. <laughs> Coconut and mangoes. It was better than an exotic vacation. Wow, I'm seeing a <laughs> lot of really cool tropical things tropical here. Tropical things. What are we doing? We're going to make a sticky mango and coconut cake today. Oh my gosh. Isn't that fun? I feel like I'm in Hawaii yeah, already. Exactly. Well, you know, the thing is that it's, we're still in that kind of transitional period, but the beautiful mangoes are just starting to come to the market and all the different mangoes. varieties. Gorgeous. So we're going to play with mangoes oh, today. Boy. So let me show you how I like to get the peel off of a mango oh, and boy, prep it yeah. for this particular dish. Okay. And this is going to be for a dice, basically. So what I do is I cut both ends off, and that's to kind of stand the mango up and stabilize it. And then I just take my knife and sort of following the curve of the mango, I take the, take the peel off like this. I do this also when I clean oranges and cantaloupe and oh, all really? different what kinds cool of fruit, tip. pineapple. The key is, you know, you want to keep as much flesh on there as possible, but, you know, kind of and maintain the, the shape of the fruit. Now, the mango has a big giant pit in the center. Yeah. Okay. So you can either just shave two big fillets off the side and I do that if I'm making like a fruit platter uh -huh. but in this case since I want to do a dice what I'm gonna do is just cut sort of thin slices off of the pit like that uh, yeah, yeah. and then I'm gonna go around to this side do the same thing and then we'll you know uh, when I'm also what I do is I go and I take slices off of this end too but I'll just I'll just advance the process here and show okay. you so I stack these up like this and then just cut it into a nice little baton or you know julienne or whatever you want to call it in this direction and then spin it and finish my dice. The old slice and dice. <laughs> yes. well, what we need for this cake is about a cup of diced mango. I love this cake because it is super simple. Oh, so that's I'm, my yeah. kind of cake. So kind of two steps. So what you're right. going to do is you're going to mix together the dry ingredients. So you've got some flour. This All is right. just an unbleached. Okay, I'm just dumping white. these yeah, guys dumping. in there. Yep, All right. exactly. My favorite job here. <laughs> And then in that little container is just a combination of salt, baking soda, and baking powder. Okay. So drop that in. And then some shredded coconut. So is this fresh coconut? No, this is not fresh. This is a shredded coconut that we sell in our bulk bins at PCC. Ah, and it's okay. unsweetened. We've got some light brown ah, sugar. Ah, yeah, gonna okay. going to toss that in there. And then we're going to add um, about a quarter cup of, of milk. And then because we're it's totally into coconut, about the same amount of coconut milk. Oh, coconut milk. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, about a um, quarter of a cup of melted butter and some vanilla. So all that gets mixed together. Okay. And then I'm just going to put it into your dry ingredients, and then you can just kind of fold it all in. Okay. Just, all so right. now we're going to add our mango to that, and you're just going to kind of fold that in. Oh, you ready? Okay, yeah, I'm ready. So a cup of mango. Okay, so just a prepared pan, a little butter and flour in there. Okay, okay. nine inch, just a regular old cake pan. All right, we'll get that in. Okay. Um, four, now tell me the bad news. How long do I gotta wait? Only about thirty minutes. Oh, thirty <laughs> minutes! Oh, jeez. All right. Okay. Ooh. So isn't that fun? Ooh. Um, I let this cool for about maybe five minutes, turned it out of the pan, and put it on a cake cooling rack uh -huh. because we're going to glaze it. Okay. But before we glaze it, we want to make sure it absorbs lots of yummy glaze, so we're going to poke some holes in it. Oh, I thought you would la probably la. be good okay, at that. Okay, little yeah. guy, this will hardly go. hurt at all. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the glaze. Okay, oh, so the yeah. glaze is just simply fresh lime juice and a little powdered sugar. So it's really tart, really bright. Ooh, it's going to bring out the flavor ooh, of that ooh, coconut. Ooh. And <laughs> Isn't that fun? Oh. Okay, so that looks perfect. I want more holes, so it's simply more. <laughs> okay. Okay. So now what we're going to do is just pour this on. So the key is to put the glaze on when the cake is still a little bit warm so that that icing kind of melts and soaks down into those holes. And then what I do is I immediately start to kind of push it out towards the edges so that it gets that pretty little drip, you know, down oh, yeah, over the yeah, edges. Yeah, yeah, Lots and then of I drip. Exactly. And then I save a little bit more to kind of... Um, finish the top. 
And that's it. And then we'll just let that cool a little bit. We'll garnish it up with some fresh mango slices and some fresh lime slices. And I will let you taste Mama, it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Am I ready? Excellent. <laughs> Warm mango cake. Ooh. And whipped cream. And I'm just going to have to follow suit. Oh. And then a little shaved coconut. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. you got to have a little shaved All coconut right. there on you there. Go. And dude, oh. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Oh, my gosh. So I tender. Do, I can taste the tropics in this <laughs> cake. I feel like I'm in Hawaii. As a matter of fact, I think I'm breaking into oh, a hula no. right no. now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What can you do? Oh, la, la, it's good. <laughs> I love you. Your hula looks like it's from Wisconsin. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> Keep trying. <laughs> well, hey, I did learn one thing. I learned how to open a coconut. Nice. You just drain the juice out of it, then just beat the living beetle hopper out of it. Get it to crack open. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco. We are outside right now, still with the Osborne Seed Company. We're in their trial garden. Now they test 80% of their seeds right here in the fields in Mount Vernon, and it is very, very local. Yeah, and look at all the cool things they're testing. It's really that. neat. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Hey, but talking about great plants. Yes. This week's plant pick is like a Daphne on steroids. <laughs> you know, the Chinese, they made paper and medicine out of it, but we like it for its fragrant beauty in winter. So I am not a huge fan of coming out here when it's cold and wet and gardening. <laughs> really, I have to admit it, I am not. But when you come across something like this, it kind of gets you inspired again. It does. So Edgeworthy at Crisanta, so tell me about what these flowers do. These flowers will open up and they'll be yellow. Oh, wow. And they just stand out and they are so fragrant. It's almost unbelievable. You could smell them from about a block away. And the bizarre thing is, is that they bloom in winter yeah. after it drops its leaves. Yeah, it's really neat. You know, uh, this is in the Daphne family. Oh, which so, is why it yeah, smells so good. Sur- so I did notice this little thing here. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I don't think that would, it, it'll become a problem if we leave it. I think okay. we better cut that guy off. Okay. Yeah. Now I'll get this out of the pot. Oh. Hint, hint. Yeah, that means I got to dig the hole again. Oh, man. I tell you what. <laughs> oh, I got a little root job to do here, too. Did it come out of the pot okay? Yeah, it did. It just. Ah, not too bad. I'm ready. What's taking you so long? Uh, now, is there a good side on that thing? I don't know. Let's see. I think I like it the way, yeah, just about the way you got it, because then it won't grow too much into the outdoor dust, too, either, which is important. How's our uh, per? Oh, did I dig a you great hole? You dug or a perfect what? hole. <laughs> Oh, this, you know what's going to be so neat, Negan? Huh. You got a nice sunny spot. Yep. But not, but not too intense on here. No. Nope. And what really is nice, everybody walking by will smell this plant. It'll smell so good. And the leaves are real pretty on these. They have a, almost a tropical look. This is a great plant. Isn't not that fun? Much. No, and it's, you know, so unusual looking, particularly in winter, which is what... I want an interesting winter garden. Yeah, and boy, this will add interest, fragrance. Edgeworthia chrysantha. I'm looking forward to those bright yellow flowers and that lovely smell. Do I need to fertilize in come springtime? Or yeah, is it okay? give, it a, give it a little organic starter fertilizer or something like that in the spring, and that's all it'll take. Love it. It's and It's going to do great. Oh, yeah, very, very prunable, you know. And, and like this branch is coming out, sometime you may have to cut that off, but... For now, it's looking good. Yeah, slow growing, so it won't take over too much too fast. So the Edgeworthia, while absolutely gorgeous and smells good, is a little spendy. About 30 bucks is what you can expect to pay. Oh, man, that's cheap at twice the price. It's, <laughs> it's worth it. In your man, garden. Oh, man. Hey, look at all these wow. incredible things that they're testing out here at Osborne Sea. This is a kale. It's called Scarlet. It's oh. brand new. Isn't? Can you imagine whipping that up in a dish? That is gorgeous. Yeah, but look at this Savoy cabbage. Oh, <laughs> la, la. 
You're sprinkling me, dude. Watch out. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. All these different vegetables that they're testing, a couple of carrots and leeks there. If you want. Boy, I could take a bite out of this right now. Go for it. Let's watch. <laughs> Do it. Come on, no, big guy. I changed my mind. Hey, vegan. <laughs> Let's go see if they got any Brussels sprouts out here. You do that. I'm going to coffee. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye, everybody. See you later.